chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. And today, guys, I am finally joining the tier list genre. Took me long enough, right? This is the first tier list I have ever made. Well behind the curve here, but I guess better late than never. And today is going to be the long-awaited novice program ranking tier list. And this video, as you guys probably saw when you clicked, I don't know how long it's going to be after I edit it, but I would assume it's going to be at least an hour or so. We're going to look at 30 popular novice programs, and there's even more I could have done. This video could theoretically go on indefinitely, but I pick 30 here, and we're going to go into how I grade them on the 1 to 5 scale. And some of you guys have asked me if I am going to put out my own novice program at some point. As I've said before, once I hit 50k subscribers, I think that's going to be the point when it happens. As we're going to see in this video, there's already a lot of a three-day novice program, so I probably would make it four days just to kind of stand out a little bit more. But before we jump into this, guys, I want to give just some precursors here. We're going to go over what I think makes for a good novice program. So the first one is going to be, of course, a focus on compound lifts because novices need to master their own body in space without machine assistance. They need to get used to heavier loads, using their entire body as a unit, awkward positions they might have never assumed before, kind of foundational patterns of human movement. As you can tell by looking at this fine physique, that I'm a freak of nature, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a specimen of human movement. Now the second one is lower moderate volume. And I know my take on volume is a little bit controversial, guys. There are some programs even geared toward beginners I see. They're doing 16 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't care what you guys try to say. Especially as a beginner, there is no need for that much volume per week directly for a muscle group. Now the third thing is going to be moderate frequency as well. So this can apply for anybody of any experience level, but especially beginners. Three to four days a week in the gym is really all you should need. Once again, as a beginner, you can do more in less time. Why would you not take that deal? And I recently put up this community post for some reference here. I said, how often do you miss workouts and why? And we see the results. 11% said never because they're true five percenters. 52%, and this is where I fall into, also said a few per year. Just given occasional sickness, trips, vacations, family events, it's going to happen. Now, the option here that says too often. I left this vague intentionally because that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But if you ask me, if you're missing workouts one to two per month consistently, I think that's too much. Like, if you cannot string together four straight weeks of consistent training over and over, for the most part, you're missing too many workouts. And surprise, surprise, I got a handful of comments confirming what I've been telling you guys for a long time now. The vast majority of guys who routinely miss sessions are doing push-pull legs, bra. And I don't care what excuses you young guys have, okay? Oh, but I go to the gym to fight demons, bro. Oh, the gym is my happy place. You need to get a job. And then the last aspect here of what I like to see in a novice program is clear direction. If you're honest with yourself, you can admit to this. As a novice in the gym, if given an inch, you will take a mile. People that genuinely like lifting in general are prone to this, but especially as eager beginners, you want to get big and swole, bro? Want to look like sebum, bro? Novices are always going to do the most, even when they don't need to. Oh man, just find what feels good for you and listen to your body. There is some truth to that, but as a beginner lifter in the gym, you do not have the experience yet to accurately judge either of those things. You have not earned your stripes to make these types of decisions for yourself. Do what is on your sheet. One of the biggest mistakes novices make, and I did this more than one time myself, is rewriting an entire program even though they literally have no programming experience. That's the Dunning-Kruger effect of people who are new and inexperienced in any field. So if you have these ever-changing mesocycles and blocks and every three or four weeks things are changing up, this phase and this phase, I understand that conceptually, but as a beginner lifter in the gym, even if you play a serious sport, you don't need all these bells and whistles. You simply need good exercises on a sheet to follow and make progress on. The entire purpose of the novice phase is to complete the novice phase. 
It's not meant to be a two, three, four year process, jumping from program to program, trying out all these formulas and all these percentages. You get through the novice phase in six months, a year, maybe a little bit over a year. You get on with the rest of your training career. So with all of that said, let's get into these rankings. At the bottom of the list, and the tier list puts this in green, which would indicate you should do it. I think they have that mixed up. Red is at the top. It's like the inverse of a stoplight. Anyway, the first tier is Novice Purgatory. So in my estimation, if you follow the routine as it's laid out, you're going to end up spinning your wheels for a long time. Given that we're talking about novices here, a program would have to be extremely complicated or just very bad overall to fit this category. If you're a beginner, you're going to make progress doing anything if you recover and have good form and all that stuff once that's taken care of. So for any program here that fits the novice purgatory category, you know it's really bad. Now one tier above that is called, eh, sure. So, like I just mentioned, you will get results from doing something in the eh, sure tier, but it's not going to be as good as it could be. It might be a little bit too volume heavy, it might be lacking in some other things that a novice would need to take care of. Maybe it's too focused on machines. So the eh, sure one is like, okay, yeah, whatever, right, do it, but there are better ones to choose from. So once again, I don't think a lot of them are going to fit into this tier, but we will see. Now, tier number three is called Proven But Bare Bones. And this is where, initially, I thought a lot of these plans are going to fall. So when you guys think of the classic Proven Novice systems, which we're going to talk about, a lot of them are going to fit this tier. Low exercise selection, pretty modest volume. Stuff that is absolutely going to grow your base. But in the grand scheme of things, it's sort of lacking weak point training, maybe certain mirror muscles, that type of thing. So people are going to be able to graduate from them relatively quickly, I would think. And ultimately, I think you can start with more than that and still get all of your noob gains taken care of in a timely fashion. Now, above that is called good with asterisks. And there could be multiple asterisks. But this tier is essentially solid. I would recommend anybody do it. But I just noticed one, two, or maybe three things with it that might not be the best. It's sort of nitpicky, to be fair, but this is a tier list. Nitpicking's part of the process here. But very good overall, just a few things I might change or tweak. Or some things might be too vague, too ambiguous, too much leeway for the novice, as I mentioned. And now the top tier on this list is called Intermediate ASAP. And in my estimation, given the program itself, without any mods, any edits... Any version 2, 3, 4, etc. People rewriting it. Without anything added, I would consider the ones that fit this tier as good as you can possibly get. Or as close to perfect as you could possibly get. And I think those would deliver you to a full body novice gains. So with all of that out of the way, let's finally get started here in no particular order. We're going to just go how they list them to me. Looks alphabetical with the numbers at the beginning. And the first program is 531 for beginners. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the main 531 percentage based system. This works the same way, week one, three by five, the last set is AMRAP 85%, week two, up to three reps AMRAP 90%, and then on the third week, one plus AMRAP at 95. Now something with the novice program here, it's what is called first set last. So you're getting extra volume in for the main exercise. So you do 5x5 five five at the initial percentage for the main lift after you do sort of the main strength work per se. That repeats for all of these as well. So here is the full program. Monday, we do squats and bench press with the percentages and the first set last we just discussed. And then we have push, pull, and single leg slash core assistance work. So this is going to be where the discrepancy is with this program for me. Day two is Wednesday, deadlift overhead press, Friday bench press and squats. Now this is where it gets interesting with the assistance work. So each day you're going to choose one exercise for each of the three categories below. So I'm glad he's listing categories, not just saying pick something esoterically and perform 50 to 100 reps of it. It's a little open-ended, I think. The number of sets you use to accomplish is not important. You can do all of your reps for each category one at a time, or finish your workout faster, you can cycle through a set of each in a circuit. 
If you choose a bodyweight exercise and cannot complete at least 50 reps, you can choose a second exercise to finish the total out. If you choose a weighted exercise and cannot complete at least 50 reps, you chose a weight that was too high. Don't overthink your choices, your weight selection, or your sets and reps. What's important is just about getting the full body volume done. So in the push category, we have dips, push-ups, dumbbell bench, incline dumbbell, dumbbell OHP, triceps, chin-ups, pull-ups, inverted rows, a lot of types of rows, face pulls, pull-downs, curls, and then single leg and core, so any ab, or, yeah, there's a lot of ab variations you can do. Back raises, reverse hypers, lunges, step-ups. So you guys know that I'm a fan of the overall 5-3-1 scheme. I've used it myself for a while. I think it's very good as a way to get into percentage-based training once your plus five gains sort of slow down. So in terms of percentages for beginners, I don't think beginners really need any sort of real periodization or percentage-based stuff. It's not bad necessarily, I just don't think that's really needed. And in terms of the assistance work, he laid this out well, I would say. He gave you a choice of really what you can pick from, which I think most people in general would gravitate to most of these things. I'm not sure the tricep extension and tricep pushdown and like the curls, I'm not sure if they can really qualify as full accessories for these two movement patterns. Same with single leg and core, it's a little bit open-ended, like, oh, you can do a single leg or a core exercise, right? Like, that's a big difference in terms of the overall growth you're going to get from either of those things. So this is interesting for me because it's definitely not just a bare bones program because there's accessory work. I hate to do this because I like 531, but I might have to put it in the eh sure tier. I don't think total beginners need percentages and I don't think having a big list of accessories to pick from even if it's outlined. I don't think that's the best for total beginners. So up next is the Alpha Destiny Novice program. He put this out. I'd have to check his website, but he put this out a number of years ago, but this is a typical three-day full body one. Rotates A, B, A, B, A, B. Workout A. Box squat three slash five. I guess that means you can do three or five sets times four to six. Floor press or pause bench. I would say the vast majority of novices should be doing bench press because you're just not big enough to get proper range of motion on a floor press. Same thing. Pen lay row. 3x5, 4 to 6. Overhead barbell extension, 3x6 to 10. Preacher curl, 3x6 to 10. Stiff legged deadlift or good morning, 2 to 3x6 to 10. Weighted plank, 3 times 30 to 60 seconds. Workout B, box squat again. Then you go into the paused OHP, the trap bar deadlift, 2x4 to 6. I'm not sure if that's high or low handle. We'll have to check on that in a second. Close grip bench press, 3 times 6 to 8. Weighted chin up 3 by 3 to 5, and then weighted plank 3 by 30 to 60 seconds once again. Okay, let's read some of the FAQs on his website. Can I add some extra accessory work or change exercises? Okay, I like this. Do not modify anything unless indicated below. One of my intermediate, he says as a general guideline, you can move on to intermediate program once you can box squat three. Oh yeah, the same strength standards that I say these are for one rep. He has these for five reps, but I get a bunch of heat for this for some reason. For the major compound exercises, you're doing either three sets or five. You never do sets of four for reasons that are too complicated. I don't know if it's that complicated. It's one or the other, no questions asked. If doing three sets, the total amount of reps should add up to 15 to 18. The manner in which the reps add up to this does not matter as long as you're within the rep range. If doing five sets, the reps should add up to 25 to 30. Still, the method in which you achieve these reps is irrelevant as long as you stay within the rep range. So he keeps underlining this. Kind of similar to the 531 accessory work. Do I go to failure? You should avoid failure as much as possible. Good. If you are, it's because you're not eating or sleeping enough. Or they're just, you know, hopped up on pre-workout. Here we go. Trap bar, lower, high handle. Whatever you prefer. If using high handle, you will lift 40 to 60 pounds more. It might be around 100 pounds or more than that. Uh, I would say, guys, if you're going to do a trap bar deadlift, low handle is the way to go. Way too many guys do the high handle trap bar for the reason outlined here, because they can just lift more weight, but they're doing like a half squat with it. I would do low handle. Okay, so given everything we've seen, I'm going to put this one in the good with asterisks, just because, again, he has kind of that variance in the amount of sets you can do. The high handle trap bar, I would not recommend. There is no incline work. You know, you can make the case for that. Some people would even say that incline 
can just outright replace overhead pressing. I do think beginners should learn and master OHP though, for sure. So not a whole lot of complaints with that, just a few things, but yeah, that's solid. I didn't do that program myself, but I'm sure you do very well on it. All right, up next is the Arnold Golden Six. So like many programs you're gonna see here, this is basically three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And this is all I was able to find guys right here. So unless I'm missing something, there's not like BA days or anything like that. It's just one workout you repeat for three days a week. So there's really no variance to it. So first we have squats four by 10, wide grip bench press three by 10. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot do a truly wide grip bench without very bad shoulder pain. So I can't do that. Chin up three times failure behind the neck overhead press. That's an old school exercise. Not many people do that anymore. Four by 10 barbell curl three by 10 and then bent knee sit up. Not a big fan of sit-ups myself. Three to four times failure. This is going to hit most areas of the body. Okay, legs, quads, glutes are covered. Pressing muscles are covered. Chin-ups are tough because a lot of beginners can't do them. So you might have to do a lat pull-down or supinated pull-down with that. I guess an assisted chin-up too. Behind the neck overhead press. I think you could do rows and get similar benefits and then just do an OHP here. Barbell curl, sure even though your biceps are never going to look like Arnold's. I can't hate on this. Like, I think you can get gains doing this, but I think it's pretty limited in its overall scope. All in all here, I'm going to put this on the proven but bare bones category. You can get gains from it, but I think it's just a little bit too limited. All right, next is the Athlean X Full Body Beginner's Guide. Now, this one I almost didn't include. I found it right before I made this video. So he has a video on this same thing. This is the thumbnail right here, I think, with Jesse in it. And he has a whole article on his website here. I'm not going to read this entire article, guys, but I'm going to give you guys a little primer of how absurd this is. Again, this is typical Athlean X, okay? Perfect beginner workout breakdown. So there's three levels of the beginner workouts. Level one is what he calls the break-in period. Basic moves for an absolute beginner, which means some of them are going to be body weight. I have no problem with that. When weights are used, the exercise will not be complicated to perform. Okay, that's fine. Level 2 goes past the novice period and involves using weights exclusively, but heavy emphasis on increasing neuromuscular efficiency. You could just do that from day 1, though. And then level three, you're going to graduate to more advanced moves, specifically compound movements that target major muscle groups, several major muscle groups at a time. It's in level three where you're going to find the more advanced extra. So he calls, listen to this, the barbell back squat, the barbell bench press, and the barbell deadlift, according to Athlean X's words, are advanced exercises for beginners. And these are some level one beginner exercises. Push up, totally fine. One arm dumbbell press. What is the purpose of it being one arm? No need for that. A chest supported row. Again, this is typical Jeff dude. When we get in this position, we don't have any demands on low back strength, right? So a novice who's going to be rowing what? Probably the empty bar or 60 to 70 pounds. Their low back is going to be in that bad of a position. So we have to do a chest supported row first. The lat pull down. I mean, that's fine if you can't do pull ups yet. A banded pull down. I guess is an alternate for that. A cable pull through. No need for that at all as a beginner. You see what I mean? A dumbbell drop squat. Right? So we can't even do a barbell back squat to start. We have to have the dumbbell at our groin and squat up and down with it. Body weight split squat. I do like this one. I think a lot of people need to master the split squat position. You'd be surprised how many people, even if they have decent leg size, they can't like hold upright in a split squat without holding on to something. Reverse lunge is fine. And then there's a roll up and then a suitcase. So it's a lot of kind of foundational movement patterns. But once again, you can just incorporate some of these into the normal programming with the bench squat and deadlift and row and stuff. Then we go into the dumbbell bench press, the dumbbell shoulder press. So now we're doing two arms at a time as if we couldn't have done that right off the jump. The tripod row, the assisted pull-up, you could teach anybody how to do that from day one. I've done it many, many times. The Romanian deadlift, again, that's a day one exercise or week one exercise, if you ask me. The goblet squat, so now instead of holding it at the groin, we have it up here. Still not doing barbell squats yet. Dumbbell split squat, dumbbell lunge, okay. Farmer's carry, instead of a suitcase carry. 
right? So we're doing a lot of like one side at a time and then we're in level two now, two sides at a time. Now we finally can move on to, this is like the third month into the program, I believe. The barbell bench press and then the OHP, then the underhand row. I don't see a point in an underhand row. Then a pull up, then a deadlift. And then there's the back squat finally, right? So all of these basic beginner exercises, even for experienced people, these are your bread and butter. Split squats, normal squats, deadlifts, pull-ups, rows, OHP bench press. These come at the end of his, like, waves. Also, he has him walking around carrying dumbbells over his head. I don't really see a point for that. But this is how it goes. This is the first month. You do workout A, C, B, C, A. So you're doing five days in a row for a month with the first set of exercises we saw. So we're going to do a dumbbell drop squat, then a one-arm dumbbell press. FF means form failure. Chest supported row, body weight split squat. Then we, I mean, guys, do you see what I'm saying? Look how, look at all of this stuff for a beginner workout. Then you go into month two. You do the same nonsense, right? I mean, guys, look at all of this stuff being crammed into here. We're still going to be doing five days in a row per week. This is just novice purgatory if I've ever seen it. Way too complicated, beating around the bush. You can teach people how to control their entire body and do this while teaching them barbell stuff. Vintage Cavalier, dude. Now, next is the Athlean X push-pull legs. I have a full video breakdown on that, guys. Click the video in the top corner if you want to see it. I'm not going to go over it all here. I want to put it in the Ash shirt tier, but it is Athlean X. We have to consider his history. Novice Purgatory. Jeff worked for the Mets and he's got abs and you don't. <laughs> Next up is the A Workout Routine. That's a website, aworkoutroutine.com. Their full body workout. So once again, A, B, A, B, A, B setup. So it says version one and then version two at the bottom just adds some arm work and calf work at the end. So I guess we'll just look at this one because it's really the same exact thing. All right, so workout A. Squats, three sets of eight to 10, two minutes rest. Bench press, three by eight to 10 again, two minutes rest. Rows, three by eight to 10. One set of tricep press downs. I don't know why you'd only do one set unless you're Mike Menser maxing. And then calf raises. Workout B, three by six to eight on deadlifts. Don't think you need to do three sets of deadlifts, especially twice a week. You do not need to be doing six sets of deadlifts as a beginner, at least conventional, not at all. Pull-ups or pull-downs, three by eight to 10. 3x8 to 10 OHP, one set of 10 to 12 bicep curls, and then abs, one to two sets of 10 to 12 reps. I guess you have whatever leeway you want there. So in a condensed format, this is the workout. So every week we're getting squats, bench, rows, deadlifts, pull-ups or pull-downs, and overhead shoulder press. Pretty standard issue. So definitely not bad. I'm going to put this in the proven but bare bones tier. Not too bad. Next up is the Barbell Medicine Beginner's Prescription. That's a cool name for a program. All right, now what I found for this one, they have variances per week. I think mostly in terms of the conditioning because most of these, there's three days a week. A lot of these look pretty darn similar. Back squat, four sets at RPE six for one set, four reps at RPE seven for one set, four reps RPE eight for two sets. We go down to week three. It's the same thing. Same with the bench press. So let's take a look at just their overall exercises. Then we're going to go into the kind of RPE scheme. Day one, back squat, bench press, deadlift. OHP, back squat, barbell rows. Day three, deadlift, bench press, and back squat. So once again, very standard issue, three days a week. It's not a BAB thing, but it's very similar to it. So we're getting back squats every day, three days a week. We're getting some sort of a pressing, so it rotates between bench press twice a week, OHP once a week, and then we're deadlifting twice a week too, and then there's rows on day two. So exercise selection is solid. In terms of they have conditioning at the bottom, 30 minutes of steady state cardio at RPE six to seven, one time a week, whatever. It's a bit bare bones for me, right? Because it's just back squat, back squat, back squat, deadlift, deadlift, bench, bench, right? So I think you could go for a little bit more variation. Uh, the RPE, I am not entirely sure why we're starting like one set, RPE 6, then RPE 7, RPE 8. If you ask me, you could just broadly brush stroke the entire thing as RPE 8. Like RPE 8 for a novice is good. 
where you can finish your last rep and might get a little bit slow, but then you rack it, that's RPE 8. RPE 6, that's like a warm-up set. So I don't know if they're necessarily counting this as a warm-up set. I'm going to put it in the proven but bare-bones category because it's similar to a lot of things, but I don't think I could recommend that. Like, I think there's other stuff that's going to be in a similar tier that is going to give you more variety. All right, up next is the Johnny Candido Strength Slash Control Program, and he has another one right after this we're going to look at too. So we have an upper lower, essentially. Monday, heavy lower day, 3x6 on the squat, 2x6 on the deadlift. Optional exercise. We're going to look at what he recommends coming up. 3x8 to 12, so two optional exercises here. Tuesday, heavy upper, bench press, 3x6, primary upper back exercise, 3x6, shoulder exercise, 1x6, kind of odd. Upper back exercise number two, one by six. You might be able to combine those, really. Optional exercise, three by 12, three by 12, okay. Then we go into the control lower day, pause squat, six by four, pause deadlifts, so you pause right after the weight comes off of the floor, three by four. Two more optional exercises here. Control day upper, spoto press, six by four, Pause a primary upper back exercise. Pause at full contraction. Six by four. One by ten on a shoulder exercise. One by ten on an upper back exercise number two. Not paused. Optional exercise. Optional exercise. All right, and here are the exercises he recommends for these slots. So upper back exercises. That's going to be on the upper days. Dumbbell row, barbell row, or any machine. Upper back exercise, so that's basically a row. For the number two slot... That's a weighted pull-up, a weighted chin-up. Okay, so it's basically upper back exercise number two is a vertical pull. Upper back exercise one is a horizontal pull. I like the fact that it's condensed down to these options. It's not like a giant list. Optional upper body exercises. Okay, so this is on the upper days here. Rear delt fly, tricep push down, close grip bench, extremely strict dumbbell curl, incline cable, fly incline dumbbell press. Okay, this 531 had something similar, right? So... We have a tricep push down in the same tier or category as an incline dumbbell press. Those are pretty different if you ask me. Oh, you can also do loose form dumbbell curls, face pulls, optional lower body exercises, okay. Leg press, hamstring curls, front squats, stiff legged deadlift, single leg leg press, overhead squat. Oh, I tried those in college for a bit. Those are very hard. Snatch grip deadlift. Can't get mad at the template. I'm an upper lower guy myself. I definitely like it. My only real critique with this program would just be the fact that there's too much, like I said, too much pasture for beginners. I'm going to put this in the good with an asterisk tier simply because there's too much lenience and too much open stuff for novices to do, but the system itself looks very solid. Up next is Candido again with his linear strength and hypertrophy program. So once again, same template, upper, lower. Looks pretty similar. Uh, the lower days are... Well, the first one is exactly the same. The second lower day is, okay, hamstring curls are included. Calf raises are included, which you're going to skip. So we have a deadlift variation instead of a specific type of pause deadlift. Hypertrophy upper, Friday upper hypertrophy, chest press flat or decline 4 by 8 incline chest press 4 by 8 upper back exercise, bicep. Okay, so this is more or less the same thing, but... Essentially, it's a filled-in version of the initial one with some extra stuff added into it. And I've said before, guys, most true powerlifting training, it's not just doing three rep sets and one rep maxes and leaving. Serious powerlifters are doing this stuff. They're doing accessory work. Now, they might not do as many as bodybuilders, per se, but this is ultimately what it looks like. This is vintage upper-lower training. You guys might realize that 531 looks kind of similar to this, so does conjugate. Once again, same as the first one. My only issue is that there's just too many optional slots and stuff and too many, you know, pick a variation here, which I get it. Like if you're a smart novice, you can do these things on your own, but I got to be nitpicky. So same thing. I'm going to put it right next to its sibling program. Good with asterisks just because of the leeway. There was one more Candido program called Control and Power. I'm not going to review that one, but I would assume it's going to be pretty darn similar. So up next, we have the Fierce Five. And according to this website, this has been fact-checked. So that's good, I guess. So here is the overview, A-B-A-B-A-B, -B -B, as we've seen many times. And here are the two workouts. 
Number one, back squat, three sets of five, two to three minutes rest. Bench press, three by five, same thing. Penlay row, three by eight. I think this rest is a little bit too low, but you can intuitively just do more. Face pull, three by 10. Calf raise, and so 5A and B, these are supersets. Face pull, three by 10. Calf raise, two by 15. And then tricep push down. Pretty balanced overall, I would say. And then workout B, we have the front squat, three by five. Okay, so that's good. They kind of have a variant. It's not just back squatting three days a week like you see so many times. Overhead press, three by five. Romanian deadlift. Have not seen a Romanian deadlift yet. Finally, dude. Maybe maybe we did. I don't remember, but I don't see enough Romanian deadlifts in novice programs. I think that's a foundational day one or week one movement. Lat pull down, three by eight. Any ab exercise, two by 15. Barbell bicep curl. I don't see any normal deadlifts, which is surprising, but the RDL is going to cover the same purpose, and I think ultimately do it a little bit better for muscle building purposes. If you can't Romanian deadlift properly, you can't do a normal deadlift properly. And one other thing it's missing is upper chest work, which that seems to be a recurring trend. I suppose you could say the overhead press is going to work your upper chest. You might be able to say that doing more sets for the bench press and the overhead press would be warranted because, I mean, if you're going back and forth, three sets of shoulder press in a week, very low, and say it's the alternate week, three sets of bench press, there's no other chest exercise, I think that's too low in its own right. So a five by five there might be better warranted, but ultimately I say that's pretty solid. So I'm going to put this in the good with asterisks tier. I think it needs more overall volume. You could tweak it a little bit, but it's not bare bones because there is arm work and some leg work in there too. And up next is GZCLP. I see this one in comments a fair amount. All right, so here are the tiers. Tier one, the primary barbell compound for the day. Tier 2, a secondary barbell compound for the day, done with less weight for more reps. And then Tier 3 is the tertiary accessory exercise. And we're leaving at least one rest day between each workout. So there's four days. So based on the schedule here, this is not like typical upper lower Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then the following Monday, we're going to do day 4. Let's take a look at this example. Day 1 would be squat, bench press, lat pull down. Day two, overhead press, deadlift, dumbbell row. Day three, bench press, squat, lat pull down. Okay, so same thing as day one, just inverted on the top two. And then day four, deadlift first, overhead press second, then dumbbell row. So here's the sets, reps, and rest. Plus indicates the last set is an AMRAP. That's pretty common. So stage one, I'm not sure how long each stage goes. Probably a month or so, maybe a little bit longer. On tier one, we're going to do five sets of three plus meaning the last set is an AMRAP. So let's take a look at day one. So that means we're going to do five by three plus on the squat. For bench press, we're going to be doing three sets of 10. Then tier three, we're going to be doing three times 15. Stage two is going to become six sets of two plus, three sets of eight for this one on tier two, and then NA on tier three and tier... Okay, this is starting to confuse me my goodness okay so begin at stage one sets and reps for the lift so that's five times three last set am rep if you fail to complete the total number of reps move on to the next stage if you fail to complete this why would you go on to another stage when you fail at the last stage 10 sets of one plus you'll use the guidelines below to select a new weight and return to stage one. Dude, I don't know if I'm totally missing something, but this makes no sense to me at all. When you fail at the last stage, you'll use the guidelines below to select a new weight and return to stage one. Tier one, test for a new five rep max. Use 85% of this weight to restart the cycle. Tier two, find the last weight you lifted during stage one. Add 15 to 20 pounds to this and restart the cycle. Tier three, Add weight when you can do 25 reps on your AMRAP. I don't know, man. I had heard good things about this, and I don't think this is even bad per se, but this whole section here, I, I I don't know, dude. This seems way too confusing. Like, I've been lifting for years, and I'm having trouble deciphering this. I don't know how a beginner is supposed to understand what this is. I hate to say it because I like the overall system, but uh, that thing at the bottom there, I don't know, dude. I That was way too complicated. Like, this took me 20 minutes to try to figure out, and I'm still sort of confused with it. Just reduce by 10% of the total weight, and then build back up. They're like, no, do 6 by 2 plus, and then 10 by 1. I don't like it. We're going to take a trip to the farm at Langley, kids, and talk about the first real novice program I did. 
Ice Cream Fitness 1.0. And this is, at least for my era and my generation of lifters, this is one of the most well-known novice programs ever written. Even just the thumbnail of the video, dude. It's amazing. There's Coach. Squats 5x5. Five five. If you don't like barbell squats, my routines are not for you. Go find some fluff and pump routine that will take you five years to get anywhere. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys right now are doing way too much fluff and pump on your PPL bra. And Blaha himself has said that this program is intended for young men who are eating a lot of food. Because there's a lot of volume on this program. And whenever I did it myself, I think I modified part of it. I think I removed the barbell shrugs that are on workout A. Workout A, squats, 5x5. Five five. Bench press, 5x5. Five five. Bent over row. If I'm not mistaken, I think he would rather you do the pen lay row here, not the bent over row. I could be wrong, but 5x5. Five five. Barbell shrugs, 3x8. Tricep extensions, 3x8. Straight bar or incline curls, 3x8. Hyper extensions with a plate, 2x10 and then cable crunches three by 10. So then workout B, once again, squats five by five. So we're getting 15 sets of back squats every week. Deadlift one by five, classic. Standing press five by five. Bent over row, 10% lighter than workout A. Close grip bench press. So we do the close grip bench three by eight, and then there's curls and cable crunches once again. So in my estimation, the real issue with this program is the fact that the volume is too high. So we're going to look at Ice Cream Fitness 2.0 in a second, but this many squats is a lot. We're doing 15 sets of rows per week, and we have shrugs. I don't think shrugs have a place in this program. I don't think they're needed at all. Hamstrings are neglected, which is common, as we've seen in a lot of these novice programs. That I've never really understood that. I got to a high 350s deadlift on this program, I got to around a 200 bench, and bench for me genetically is a weak point. I got to, uh, I want to say, almost a one plate aside overhead press with this. And I was skipping legs a lot because I was like, I'm not doing that many squats. I lived in LA then. I was new there. I was like, skinny jeans, bra. So I don't know what my full gains could have been if I did this, but it is a proven system. So I got to put it in the good with asterisks tier, but all in all, it's a pretty good system. And that brings us on to the 2.0 version of Ice Cream Fitness. So as we can see, the volume issue was sorted out. He fixed a lot of the mistakes in the first one. Lifts are all down to 3x5 now for the primary ones. We don't do the barbell rows on workout A because we do deadlifts. We do them on workout B though. So there's no more 10% difference in the weight on rows. Standing press 3x5. Curls are still there. He removed the close grip bench and the tricep extensions. I think he could have kept the tricep extensions in. Face pulls, 1 by 20. I think you could do two to three sets of those. And the standing crunches. So all in all, it's pretty similar. I think a good amount of the issues were resolved. Only one being, once again, barren wasteland for the hamstrings. At least the first program had hyper extensions on day A. This program, the only legit hamstring work you're getting is right here. So you're getting one set for hamstrings per week. So I'm going to have to put it into the same category as Ice Cream Fitness 1.0. So we're about halfway through this list. We have yet to find one that I would deem intermediate ASAP. We'll see if we can. But before we do so, ladies and gentlemen, it's the algorithm. All right, up next is Jeff Nippard, the Fundamentals Hypertrophy Program. So there's two versions we're going to look at, the full body and the upper lower. He also has an entire list here of substitutions. This is all in the Fundamentals PDF you can get. All kinds of substitutions for all these exercises, so I like that as well. He's pretty clear about what you can be substituting for which one specifically. It's not very broad. So that's a thumbs up for me. So now we're going to look at the full body version week one. I'm not going to go through every single week in detail, guys. I would assume it's very similar. Volume and sets and reps might go up a little bit, but this is just going to be the template. So full body one, back squat three by six at RPE seven. He also has some notes here for the cues. I like that. Barbell bench press three by eight RPE seven. Lat pull down, 3x10, RPE8, Romanian deadlift. Finally, dude, there's another one. Thank you, Jeff. 3x10 at RPE7 as well. Assisted dip, 3x8, 
Okay, so again, RPE, I would say eight for all of these will be fine, but might be splitting hairs. Standing calf raise, I'm going to skip it, three by ten. Dumbbell supinated curl, three by ten. It's a pretty solid full body day. Truly like full body, like you're hitting everything. All right, let's go down to the second one. Deadlift, three by five, RPE seven. Three sets on the deadlift, I think is a little bit, I would usually would say one or two, but not a huge deal. Overhead press, three by eight, RPE eight. Chest supported T-bar row, three by 12. Leg extension, three by 12. Cable fly, I don't know how much beginners need a cable fly, but sure, three by 12. Crunch for the abs, three by 12. Dumbbell skull crusher. Okay, once again, I'm noticing with Jeff's program, there's not a whole lot of weak points. Like, we're actually hitting pretty much every single thing. So, this one is pretty darn good from what I can tell. Full body three, dumbbell walking lunge. Dumbbell, in there's another one, incline. We have not seen an incline press, I don't believe. Reverse grip lat pull down. I guess you could do a chin up there too. Barbell hip thrust. Seated face pull. Dumbbell lateral raise, of course. Lying leg curl. I am going to tell you what, I think this is the best one I've seen so far in my opinion. So let's do some quick numbers here. Romanian deadlift. Hits the hamstrings. Lying leg curl. Hits the hamstrings. We have quads on this day, this day, and this day. We have a pressing movement on day one, day two, and there's a fly there. So you're also hitting the chest too. And day three. This is damn good, man. This is really good. I'll tell you what, Jeff. I was making my own three-day program. This looks pretty darn similar to it, man. I would say split squat in this one. I'm nitpicking totally at this point. I think a split squat is better just to master that movement pattern. I'd like to see a pull-up or chin up there, but I'm sure you can substitute it, as he would mention above. He might be assuming you can't do them as a beginner as well. Just a little bit more nitpicking. The leg extension... I don't know how much beginners would need a leg extension. You might be able to have them even do a leg press there because it's more of a compound exercise. I might have to put this on the top tier. I might have to do it. From what we've seen, I think that is the closest thing to a holistic full body program without weak points. Again, some of the stuff, I don't know if I would recommend it personally, but I think that's the closest thing we've seen to this point. Consistent, easy, straightforward progression and no weak points. And now we're gonna take a look at his upper lower program. Okay, so we're gonna start out with day one lower. Back squat, three by six. Romanian deadlift, three by 10. Barbell hip thrust, three by 12. Leg extension, lying leg curl. Seated hip abduction, that is outward. And then crunch, pretty solid. Upper body one. Bench press, three by five. Lat pull down, 3 by 10. Overhead press, 3 by 10. Chest supported, as he would say, T-bar row. Cable fly, dumbbell curl, single arm, tricep extension. Eh, single arm's a little gimmicky for a novice, but that's fine. Lower body two. He likes his walking lunges. Dumbbell walking lunge. Single leg leg extension. Eh, I really don't think you need to do that. Single leg lying leg curl. Again, we're talking novices here. I get the point, like, divvying it up to make sure you're balanced totally, but I don't think you need to do single leg. Machine-seated abduction. Okay, so it says abduction. That's the same thing. Is here. I don't think you need to do that twice in one week. Well, here it's 3 by 15. Here it's 3 by 6. I think you could have them both 3 by 8 or 3 by 10 and then just one day do this, one day do this, but... All right, upper body two, dumbbell incline, reverse grip lat pull down, the only one that's not capitalized. I'm an OCD guy myself. Jeff strikes me as that type of guy also. Assisted dip, barbell bent over row. Okay, I'm totally doing the bent over row ahead of the lat pull down, that's for sure. Lateral raise. Okay, so it's more or less the same thing, just maybe a little bit of stuff added, and then it's broken up into four days. Any of my guys that have done my programs that are getting coached by me right now, this looks... Pretty similar to what I do, right? It's not terribly different. It's a lot of the same methodology. I don't agree with every single thing he did here, but I'm going to have to put this up on the intermediate ASAP one again. So, so far Jeff Nippert is on the top of the mountain for this tier list. All right, next on the list is the king of the 
commercial gym schmuck, Jeremy Ethier. Give the guy credit. He's got a very, very good grip on kind of just the general gym-going populace that don't take it extremely seriously, but they want to get good information. He's done very well for that demographic. So this is from, he has these both in a YouTube video. You guys can look that up if you'd like, but he breaks them down in an individual video each. So first to work out, barbell bench press, three to four sets of six to 10 reps. I'm seeing a lot of three to four here. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not a huge fan of that. I think you need to tell them just, again, if we're talking novices, three should be fine in most cases. He said in one of the videos, if you're a little more experienced, you can do four instead of three, but I would just keep it at three. Bench press, 3 by 6 to 10. Back squat, 3 by 6 to 10. Pull-ups, 3 by 6 to 10. Pretty good so far. Lying hamstring dumbbell curls. Just do a machine. The hamstring dumbbell curl is just such a mess of an exercise. Just trying to get into position is going to take you longer than actually doing the sets. But there is some hamstring isolation work. That's good. Standing overhead press. 3 by 6 to 10, face pulls, drag curls. Just do normal curls. All right, barbell deadlift, 3 to 4 of 6 to 10. Incline dumbbell. All right, there we go. So we're starting to see some incline. Bulgarian split squat. I like that one. I think all beginners need to master that. Even without weight, just to get in that position for a lot of people, they can't do it because they're so tight. Chest supported or inverted row. Solid. Dumbbell lateral raise. Okay. Incline dumbbell kickback. Any sort of dumbbell kickback is ass. You need to just be doing cables if you're going to do a kickback at all. High to low cable chest fly. Looking at this in hindsight, this is almost a more improved version of both ice cream fitness plans. Because you have the foundational movements in, you get more variety, you're not just squatting every single day you come in the gym. And you get some arm isolation work, some hamstring isolation work. So here's how beginners are going to spin that. Anything upper body, they're going to do four sets for. Anything lower body, they're going to do three. Which I guess is not the end of the world, but I think you should just have one set amount of sets that they should be doing. The rep range, six to ten isn't too broad, I would say, as long as you're telling them some form of progression. I would guess like dynamic double. For the chest supported or inverted row, three to four sets of six to twelve. That is a very broad rep range, like that's double. I don't know if I could put this at the top level tier because there's a few things that are a little bit too broad, but this is very solid. I was not expecting it to be as good as it is. So I'm conflicted here. I don't know if I should put good with asterisks or intermediate ASAP because I think based on the rep range variance, I got to be a little bit of a stickler. I'm going to put it here. I would say this is as close to intermediate ASAP as we're going to get. That's on par with the Candido ones and the Alpha Destiny one. It's very solid. There's just a few things about it where I would be like, eh, I think it needs... I think that's why Jeff Nipper got up in this tier because he's just very concise. Good job for Jeremy. So we've had a lot of good programs lately, but now we're going to go down the hill because next up is Kino Body. All right, so when it comes to Kino Body, he has a number of programs available. The one I found, if I'm not mistaken, this is the movie star template. He also has the Greek God and some other ones too. A lot of his stuff is behind a paywall. This is what I was able to find, guys. So I could be mistaken in terms of how accurate or up to date this is with his information, but it sounds like Kinabody. All right, so again, if I'm missing something, you can let me know. But I found this one and there were other ones like it. It had like, oh, arm specialization or upper body specialization, but it was all this same template. Low volume, ABBA setup, three days a week. So we have the incline bench press, three sets. And then, of course, Kinabody has to jam in his reverse pyramid training, which I truly don't think is necessary. I don't think it's bad per se. Standing press, three sets. So you're already tiring your shoulders out doing this. Now you're going to do a standing press right after that. Lateral raises, three sets of eight to 12. Okay, Skull Crushers. Okay, so this is just complete upper body bro here, which is not surprising. All right, then workout B is back, biceps, traps, and legs. So we have weighted chin-ups. That's cool. Hang cleans or sumo deadlifts. Nobody that watches Kina Body is doing a hang clean. They're probably going to skip the sumo deadlifts. Same thing, reverse pyramid training, five, six, eight. Bent over flies and then barbell curls. Again, guys, this is what I found. So I may be missing something. I'm sure he has programs that have more overall 
volume than this. I think I've seen other programs of his whenever he recommends more. Like, he'll recommend, like, split squats, two sets once a week or something. So I don't think this is the full extent of him. However, what I found, this is whatever he was recommending is the baseline template to beginners. And even if he does more, I think he only claims he works out two times a week now. Very heavy upper body emphasis. He'll sprinkle in one or two leg exercises to say that they're there. Think about the guys that follow Kinabody and the ones that worship him and like comment on all his pictures and all his obviously fake transformations. Click the top corner to look at that in more detail. The guys that follow Kinabody never look remotely close to how he does, even if they've been training for years and following his advice. That's just how it is, man. So even if I'm missing some of the context of this program for his past sins, Kinabody's going in novice purgatory. And up next is Mad Cow 5x5. So this one looks like a standard 5x5 on the surface, guys, but we're going to read this quick thing here that explains it in more detail. Mad Cow alternates heavy, medium, and light workouts. You do five sets of five on the compound lifts like squat, bench, and rows. There are optional assistance exercises in each workout too, which I think most people would inevitably end up doing. So it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday system. So workout A, squat 5x5, five five, bench press 5x5, five five, row 5x5, five five, then assistance. We'll look at those in a second. Workout B, squat 4x5, incline bench. There we go, 4x5, five, and then 4x5 five on the deadlift with assistance. And then workout C, 4x5, 1x3, 1x8 on the squat. Have to get some clarification on that. Same scheme for the bench and barbell row also. So for clarification on that, this says another difference with strong lifts and mad cow is that mad cow varies the sets, reps, and weights throughout the week. So this is a typical mad cow workout. Workout A is medium. So these are ramp up sets too. It's not like you're doing all sets of five with the same exact weight. So you ramp up to five reps with 275, for example. Then on the light day, you're ramping up with about 70 pounds less total, only up to 205. Then workout C is the heaviest, and you're going to work up to an all out PR, I suppose, at three sets. Then you're going to do one back off with eight. So from what I gather here, this is kind of similar to the Texas method, which is starting strengths intermediate program, if you want to call it that. This website, this is actually on the Strong Lifts website, and they imply on this site that this is more of an intermediate version, if you want to call it that, of Strong Lifts, essentially. Strong Lifts focuses on adding weight every single session. This one adds weight every week, so it's slower. The fact that you're ramping up so much... I don't think novices need to really be ramping in that regard. So this would make a decent, I think, three-day intermediate-style program. once, Or maybe late novice, if you want to call it that. And the assistance work, too. I would absolutely throw that in there. You can also, they said, replace the incline bench with the overhead press as well. It's up to you. I get the point of that program, but in terms of novices, I'm going to put that in the eh, sure tier. Because you can do that, but novices are going to be doing best with straight sets. In my estimation, not ramping up. All right, now here's an interesting one. This is the Muscle and Strength Beginner Program. It's called Start From Scratch. Now, it says six weeks. Again, guys, don't do any program that's only six weeks in duration. That's all it is. It needs to have some sort of repeating cycles if that's the case. Anyway, if you're new to the gym scene, this is a four-day-a-week program. I'm not sure if it's up or lower or exactly what type it is, but this is interesting because this is like a mainstream site workout. So the order goes... It's like a four day upper lower, but one, two, one, two. So squats, two sets of 10 to 12. Leg extensions, one set of 12. Leg curls, one set of 12. Standing calf raises, two sets of 12 to 15. Bench press, two times 10 to 12. One set of flies, one set of pushdowns. Who's programming all these one set exercises? Workout two, overhead press, two times 10 to 12. Upright rows, one set of 12. Lateral raises, one set. <laughs> pull downs, two times 10 to 12. Okay. Underhand grip pull downs, one set. Pull overs, one set. Cable or machine rows, two sets. Concentration curls, one set. So even for a beginner program, this is low volume, too low, which is shocking. Usually it's the exact opposite. One set of all these exercises. Uh, yeah, this is... Just don't do that. All right. Now up next is the natural hypertrophy atrius program. You guys probably think I'm going to do that, right? Okay, so this is his second one. 
I believe he is the original too. We're going to look at that after. This is the more recent version as far as I can tell. So this is a three day split and it's not A, B, A, B. It's just three separate days. So it's broken down into Monday is pull, Wednesday is push, and then Friday is legs and arms. So day one, we have deadlift three sets of three or Romanian deadlift three sets of eight to 12. It's a decent variance in that. Hack squat four times 10 to 15 or farmer's carry four times 30 meters. Hack squat or farmer's carry. That's a pretty big difference again in the exercises. Decline sit up four times and wrap. Oh, the asterisks indicate that it's a superset, I believe. So you can superset these. Close grip, lat pull down, neutral or underhand. Superset with dumbbell curl four times eight to 12. Also add a split squat four times 10 to 15. And then you finish up with a shrug burnout. I'm not sure how exactly you pick the weight for that, but I guess you just find a weight and you just shrug until you can't shrug anymore. Okay, Wednesday is push. So we have bench press four sets of four to eight or dip four times six to eight. Barbell or dumbbell overhead press three times six to ten. Dumbbell row three times eight to twelve. Lateral raise or upright row four times ten to fifteen. Tricep extension four times eight to twelve. Neck curl. I don't think I've seen that yet. Four times fifteen to twenty. Then you do a rear delt row burnout set. Last up is Friday legs and arms. So we have back squat three times six to ten or leg press three times ten to fifteen. Weighted pull up or chin up three times six to ten. Easy bar curl, four times six to ten. Hyper extension, four times twelve to fifteen. Tricep push down, four times ten to fifteen. Seated calf raise, four times fifteen to twenty. Then you do a push up and abs burnout, I suppose both. I don't think you could have these in the exact same slot. This reminds me of the five three one thing when it's like do single leg or core. Right? It's like, um, okay. And then the hack squat or farmer's carry. I mean, those are completely different movement patterns. I genuinely don't understand how you're picking one or the other there. And something else too, right? We have the split squats on this day after the hack squats. Let's assume you do the hack squats. So we have legs on this day and on this day, but there's none here. What you probably could do is just move the split squat down to this Wednesday. So you're doing some sort of like quad work every single day. Because hack squats are very taxing. Split squats are taxing. I mean, this is kind of just a mishmash. I don't dislike it necessarily, but I think this needs a lot of tweaks before it would reach its purest form. I know a lot of you are going to get mad at this. I'm putting this in the Asher category. Because it's not proven in bare bones, but I wouldn't call it good necessarily. All right, now this is the original one. He put it out two years ago or so, I think. So this is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So... First exercise on Monday, we have main knee flexion, so squats. So one to three heavy sets, four to eight. Again, I'm not a big fan of the one to three heavy sets. I mean, if you're talking legs, most guys are probably going to do fewer when it comes to legs, higher when it comes to anything else. Compound movement variation, a deadlift variation, four sets of six to ten reps. And then you superset that with pull-ups. So you're doing as many pull-ups as possible. Okay, the deadlift variation is off the floor, I believe he mentioned too. Then there's skull crushers, superset with hammer curls, four sets, eight to 12 reps each. And then pseudo GPP, additional horizontal presses. We'll just do what he says here. Push-ups and abs, as many reps as possible. And I saw somebody mention he says to do high-frequency push-ups. So I don't know if that's just one set for AMRAP or if you're doing three sets here or if you're kind of sprinkling it in. I guess for argument's sake, we'll say three sets. I genuinely don't know. Um, okay, so that's the first day. Wednesday, we're doing one to three heavy sets of bench, four to eight. You know darn well they're going to do three. And then back off sets on the main. Okay, so then we're doing back off sets on the bench, three sets plus six to ten. Then we're doing overhead press supersetted with chin-ups. Four sets, six to ten for the OHP, AMRAP for the chin-ups. Then we're doing hyper extensions and cable rows, each four sets of eight to twelve. And then we're finishing up with abs, AMRAP. Again, I'm not entirely sure about how many sets or if they're supposed to be sprinkled in throughout the rest of the workout. 
Then Friday, we're doing heavy deadlifts, one to three sets, two to five reps. Some squat variation, four sets, six to ten. And then superset with pull-ups. I guess you're also doing six to ten. Then you're doing easy bar curls, supersetted with pull-ups again. Four sets, eight to 12, and then AMRAP. So I guess these are heavier pull-ups. These are lighter ones, just body weight, as many as you can do. Then we're doing the pseudo GPP push-ups and abs AMRAP again. The back is getting toasted in this program. You could argue this might be a little bit too much back work, at least for a beginner. If you're only doing one or two heavy sets of squats and you're doing lower reps on that end, you're only getting legitimately four sets of quads on this day, on the Friday. So it's lacking leg-wise. This seems like a very bro-ish type of program. So I get the methodology behind it. I'm probably going to put that in the good with asterisks one. I'd say this is on the low end of the good with asterisks. I think it's a bit convoluted, but it makes more sense than the Atreus one. Okay, up next is Ensun's 531. All right, so given the fact that this is 531 right off the bat, I don't think it's suited for outright beginners. So this one is the same four-day system. And then the assistance, you essentially get to pick whatever assistance you want. Again, not a big fan of that for total novices. So based on this alone, I'm going to have to put this in the Asher category. Just because, again, percentages and periodization for the most part, you don't need that as a beginner. Now, once you're late novice, closer to intermediate, yeah, then that's something I think you'd be better suited to do. Okay, next is the Frack Grayskull LP. People always say Frack when it comes to Grayskull, so I guess there's an original version. It's probably pretty similar, but we're going to take a look at this version. So, here are the rules. Last set is AMRAP on all the exercises. Progress with 2.5 pounds for upper body, 5 pounds for lower body. If final AMRAP hits 10 plus, double the weight increase. Any barbell row variant will do. I'm partial to Yates rows. You can use power cleans to warm up for deadlifts. Okay, day one, overhead press or bench press alternating. That's the same for every day. So I guess it's sort of like ABAB style for those. Chin-ups and barbell rows alternating. And then day one, we have squats, three by five. Day two, one by five deadlifts. Day three, three by five squats. So your squatting twice a week and you're deadlifting once a week so that's pretty low volume for the legs so we're going to put frack in the proven but bare bones system seems kind of like a typical three-day full body but a little more upper focused and on that note too let's just get the last two on this list out of the way starting strength and strong lifts starting strength three by five squat three by five bench one by five deadlift 3x5 squat, 3x5 press, 5x3 three, power cleans, and then it progresses a little bit more so, but it's mostly standard. Strong lifts, same thing. All right, so these two are just, this is exactly what I made this tier for, proven but bare bones. So yeah, those two are cornerstone programs that fit that exact profile, so they go there too. All right, almost done, guys. I know this has been going on for way too long. Next up, we're back with muscle and strength. I don't think this is their exact program, but this is called Power Hypertrophy Upper Lower or Full. So this is another program. It's four days per week. Upper power, lower power, upper hypertrophy, lower hypertrophy. So let's jump into this. So day one here, upper power. Bench press, three to four sets. Just tell them to do three. Of three to five reps, incline dumbbell. There we go. Three times six to ten, bent over row. Only three to five. Lat pull down, six to ten reps. Overhead press, five to eight. Barbell curl, skull crusher. So pretty solid exercise selection. Lower day, squat, three to five reps. Deadlift, three to five reps. Three to four sets for both. Leg press, three to five, ten to fifteen. So a little bit higher rep range there. Leg curl, and then calf exercise. I guess whatever you want to do for that. Okay, so these are pretty solid. And these are lower reps for a lot of them because it's the power day, so to speak. So then going to the upper hypertrophy day, we have incline barbell bench. The first day it was dumbbell, I believe. 8 to 12. Okay, so all of these are 8 to 12 on the upper day. Flat bench dumbbell fly, seated cable row, one arm dumbbell row, dumbbell lateral raise, seated incline dumbbell, tricep extension, lower hypertrophy, front squat, barbell lunge, leg extension, leg curl. Okay, 
So pretty standard issue. I think there's a little bit of junk volume in here that you could clean up. We have variants. It's not like it's the exact same thing on both days. We have a front squat and a normal squat. Four days a week, that's time tested. Yeah, I would put this into the good with asterisks here. I think there's just a little bit too much going on, but solid. All right, next up, this one is a blast from the past. This is the Reg Park beginner routine called Strength Training for Novice Bodybuilders. Typical ABA style, rest four to five minutes between work sets for the main lifts, one to two for assistance, add one to two kg every workout on the main lifts. And then Arnold's here for some reason. Workout A, back squat, three by five, overhead press, three by five, barbell row, three by five, weighted dip, three by five. Okay, so this is getting outside of just the bare bones territory. Dumbbell curl, wrist work, so you're going to be doing forearms, and then calf raises. All right, then workout B, front squat, three by five, bench press, three by five, one by five on the deadlift, classic, chin up or pull up, three by five, more curls, this time with a barbell, wrist work, and then calf raise. This is pretty solid, I would say. In terms of wrist work, I do not believe novices have a real need for that. You're going to be gripping weights for the first time in your life repeatedly. That should be plenty for your forearms, at least as a novice. If you get down the line and you realize your grip or forearms are a weak point, that's fine. Calves, yeah, that's fine too. At least they're included. The only thing missing here would be direct ab work of some type, I would say. So what I would do is I would replace the wrist work with just abs. And you could just probably superset these last two here. And there's also nothing for the triceps directly either. So I think you could add in some of that too. I guess the way to dips you could say do that. I can't complain about this program. I would make some tweaks, but this is good. So Reg Park 5x5, five five, also in the good tier. And the good tier is pulling away, which is to be expected because making a good novice program is not exactly difficult, I don't think. But as we've seen, there are some ways that it can not go very well. All right, next up is the R Fitness beginner routine. Oh God, Reddit. One day you get really good, legit advice one day later, you get the worst advice known to man. It's quite the trip, but ultimately, I think it should be eliminated. Reddit's like the worst of every social media combined into one. It's just, that's why I don't use it. Barbell strength training. The program itself is very straightforward. Okay, A, B, A, B. And it looks pretty bare bones. Three by five plus, so that's an AMRAP. Barbell rows, bench press and squats. Workout B, chin-ups or equivalent overhead press and deadlifts. I didn't see anything that talked about accessories or any additional work. Once again, very standard issue. At least Reddit managed not to screw this up, but it could be better. So we have how many total exercises? One, two, three, four, five, six. You can do more than just six exercises in a week. Our fitness, proven but bare bones. This is kind of the new age, I guess you could call it. All right, second to last, we have the novice bodybuilding program. This is four day upper lower from rippedbody.com, also muscleandstrengthpyramids.com. It says at Andy Ripped Body. I think this is Eric Helms crew or something like that. I'm not sure exactly who this guy is, but let's just go over this quickly. So day one lower exercise, squat variant, a lot of variants here. Three by five, uh, we're using percent one RMs too. Oh my goodness. Okay. Deadlift variant three by five, eighty two point five percent one RM. All right. Single leg. That's what SL is. Single leg variant three by eight, and then that's standing calf four by eight. Day two upper horizontal push three by five, eighty two percent horizontal pull, three by five vertical push two by eight at seventy two point five percent one RM. Seems pretty low, doesn't it? Vertical pull, and then flies. Day three, lower hip hinge variant, three by eight. Hip hinge variant, leg press variant, leg extension, leg curl, SE calf. Okay, I guess that means seated calf, four by 15. Day four, upper, we have horizontal push, three by 10 at 67.5% one rep max. So assume that's just like a bench press type. Horizontal pull, so some type of row, three by 10, Incline push, 2 by 12 vertical pull, 2 by 12 biceps. Okay, so this is not bad per se. I'm not really a fan of the percent 1 RMs and way too much leeway. This right here, besides the leg extension and leg curl, and I guess even the flies, it doesn't specify what type of flies. 
almost everything here is a variant that the novice is going to have to pick from themselves. I would probably actually put this in the good tier if there was more conciseness to it, because I understand the setup and everything. But it's just variant, 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 variant. So I'm going to have to be a stickler here and put it in the Asher category, because it's just not clear enough. All right, now one guy remaining, last but not least, Sean Nowani. So to find this, you sign up for his newsletter, essentially, on his website, and he gives you a custom plan. So this may vary for you based on what you input. I inputted very normal stuff like, I'm a man, I'm starting out new to lifting, I think I said I was skinny fat or whatever, and then it just sends you this plan. Okay, so typical A, B, A, B. Workout A, barbell squat, 3 by 5 to 7. One arm dumbbell row, three by five to seven. Incline dumbbell press, three by five to seven. Okay, we got good variation. Lying leg curl, three by eight to 10. Dumbbell lateral raise, two by 10 to 12. Single arm cable curl, doesn't need to be single arm. Two by eight to 10. Calf raise on the leg press, eight to 10. Then the barbell shrug. We'll look at the rest of this plan, but probably don't need to have the shrug in there. Um, leg press on workout B, 3 by 8 to 10. Overhand pull up, 3 by 5 to 7. Overhead barbell press, 3 by 5 to 7. Romanian deadlift, 3 by 8 to 10. Okay, this is pretty good exercise selection. Machine fly, 3 by 8 to 10. Overhead rope extension, 2 by 8 to 10. Swiss ball crunch. 2 by 12 to 15. And then a face pull for 2 times 10 to 12. Nine sets of back work at least moving back not isometric back work okay so that's pretty solid and then the barbell shrug okay so that's probably why i put the barbell shrug on this day on the dumbbell row day we have romanian deadlifts too which are going to work the back in an isometric fashion so hamstrings are getting hit each day but overall i'd say this is solid i'd put a few asterisks on it but it's good it's definitely not bare bones it'll work for what it's worth so sean Nall rounds us out as a good with asterisk program and we're finally done so the biggest controversy here i'm going to assume is going to be the good with asterisk one because depending on the number of asterisks it would be closer to the intermediate asap tier i'm not going to go through all of these right now guys i'm exhausted from doing this video you can fight in the comments on your own but it's not surprising right a lot of these plans are good because you're a novice you're going to grow doing them the reason I have Jeff Nippard standing alone in the intermediate ASAP category is because he consolidated everything very well. He didn't leave a lot of open room for interpretation and guesswork and open pasture. He told them what to do. He gave them specific exercises to swap things out with. And I think he had the best overall exercise selection for beginners. You had a lot of free weight movements. The stuff for machines was more isolation like hamstrings, maybe rear delts, right? So... In my estimation, the Nippard plan, again, it's not totally perfect, but it's the most complete one of all of these that we've seen. So that's why I have Jeff all the way at the top. Novice Purgatory, not surprising. We have a typical online rando program, Kina Body, Total Schmuck, Athlean X. It's crazy, man. I mean, that guy's knowledgeable, but he just can't get out of his own way with programming. Like I've said, man, the business model of these type of dudes... And I would argue Athlean X is probably ultimately better than Kina Body, but yeah, that might be a stretch. That's a neck and neck race in a lot of ways. But when it comes to these novice purgatory guys, like if I made Ryan Humiston on this list, he'd probably be here too. And it's not just those guys, but when it comes to novice purgatory, that's their goal. Their goal is to get you to not make a lot of progress because they keep getting your views and attention and money when you never make progress. That's the entire point. So, yeah, the Kino cells, the Athlean X cells, have fun. I always say you guys are going to see the light eventually, and it's not to say they have no good information, but if you're a beginner lifter and these are the guys you're hitting the ground running with, you're going to waste a lot of time. The Asher category, so 531, intermediate for my taste, GZCLP, I was kind of disappointed with that one. I expected this to go in the good category or even the intermediate ASAP category based on what I've heard. But that whole stage thing mixed with the tier thing, I had to punish it for it, man. I like the system itself, just the template's very good, but the whole stage thing was too much. Mad Cow, same thing, it's a ramp-up system. 531, Ensign, same thing. Ripped Body, too vague, the NH Atreus one. 
just too much going on. And then the Proven and Bare Bones. The Arnold Golden Six, good, but not enough variation. Not enough variation, not enough variation, right? So that's the list, guys. And you can argue amongst yourselves below. And that's pretty much it. So like I said, I'll be dropping my own novice program at 50k subs. It might be a little bit after because I have to iron all the details out. But that's all for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Share this with a friend and start some good arguments. Hit me up in the links down below to get in contact to get your own training and nutrition in better order and save some money on quality products. And I will catch you guys next time.